Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kiki. As of late, I've been on my social media asking you guys what you'd like to see on my channel and I got a request that I should do a hierarchy of medicine. Basically, just break it down as to who's at the top of the food chain and who's at the bottom of the food chain. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. I'm basically going to explain how you can go from a medical student to a consultant and all the levels that you must go through whether you're going an academic route or you're going an administrative route so keep on watching obviously in order to become a medical doctor you have to go to medical school and in namibia right after high school grade 12 those marks are, are what determines whether you can go to university to study to become a doctor or not so right after high school the marks that you get, you used to apply to the School of Medicine. We only have one university with the School of Medicine, and that's the University of Namibia. And you can apply there and um, study medicine for six years. So you're first a learner, then you apply to university, and then now, if you get accepted, then you obviously become a medical student. So you're a medical student for about six years, and you go through the entire training program with different domains, basically just training you through everything that you need to do in life in order to become a doctor. In your final year, which is the sixth year of medical school, you're considered a student intern. So you're a medical student, but you're also an intern. It's like a weird concept, but it's basically a year that you use to prepare yourself to become an intern. So you basically do rotations for a longer period of time and you sort of shadow or work with interns so that the very next year when you become a medical intern you have an idea what is expected of you in the different domains and departments that you're placed so after six years of medical school you then become a medical intern which is the level that i am at of course you have to register with the health council of namibia you have to go through an entire like employment paperwork it's like so long in previous years after you're done with your student internship year which is your final year in your sixth year of medical school the very next month you are required to start um, working as a medical intern but now because of there's a backlog of students and so many things you sort of have to wait a period of six months before you can actually be registered and start working as a medical intern so after in after graduation there's like a whole vigorous process and then you register you become a medical intern Medical internship is basically a period of two years where you work in different domains. We have about eight domains that you have to go through and it's a must you can't choose. You have to go through all those domains and they train you within those domains. So I am responsible to see patients, to clerk patients, to do blood, to trace the blood results. I am the person that you will see in an emergency room or a casualty when you're sick. I am the first person that will be attending to patients at any point at any given time at any given time at 2 a.m in the morning it is the intern at five o'clock at night it is the intern at 12 o'clock midday the intern so when the nurses have a problem in the ward the first person they call is the intern and if it is out of my control i now have to you know consult with the next level which is the medical officer we basically run the hospital we are the ones that are the first line with regards to everything, whether it's an accident that came into the casualty and every single thing that happens in the hospital and a doctor is required, it is the intern that goes first. And if it, if it is out of my control, obviously, then I will have to refer to my senior. So after two years of internship, um, you have to go and register to become a medical officer. That is if you have passed all the domains because you get assessed as you go along. So if you've passed your um, two years of internship, your logbook has been signed, everything is cleared, you then become a medical officer. If you're in a state hospital, but if you're going to be in a private hospital or you're going to have your own private practice, you then become a general practitioner or a GP or a family doctor or whatever. You're doing your things privately. A general practitioner basically works independently on their own so they are not attached to any state hospital they either have their own practice where they can have their own patients just walk in just things like that so you can do that and live your soft life like that for the rest of your life and it ends there which is really fine because you still get to make a lot of money 
or otherwise you can be a medical officer in a state hospital you're not going to be paid as much as a gp would get paid basically but you're overseeing the interns work you're doing major procedures you're attached to a single department where you're sort of like the senior there and should there be anything that an intern cannot handle then you sort of jump in so as opposed to other hospitals or teaching hospitals where you have the seniors on call with you at night uh, basically our seniors are using doing their calls from home and then you just call them if you need any help so in casualty at any point in time you only find interns and then maybe like a casualty officer which is a senior it's just one person who's a senior uh, medical officer who basically sees the patients and then distributes them to the different departments but 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 almost all that's not even almost you will definitely only find interns in a casualty so that's just what happens here so you can either just live your life as a medical officer and just chronically be that for the rest of your life in a department or you can choose to either go the academic route or a administrative route why do you struggle to say that <laughs> so academically you have to study a few more years in order to climb the ladder so let's go to the administrative aspect of things because it's not as tedious after a few years as a medical officer you can apply to become a senior medical officer in that particular department so you can either just do that and you'll be in charge of like some of the administrative work in the department yada yada if you're at an intermediate hospital there is another post which is called the chief medical officer so this person basically oversees any administrative work within the hospital with regards to the doctors and things like that if you're at a district level or within the regions you can also be a chief medical officer there and then you can just oversee the responsibilities and everything that needs to be done at a district level you can also apply further to become the regional director of whatever region that you're in you can definitely just keep on applying until you gain experience and by the eight, by the time you're like 55 then you can like rule the world if you want to take an academic route as a medical officer you will have to study at a university as opposed to other universities where basically you can get into a specializing program soon after your internship it is not the same with us we don't have that in our country yet i think our university has an anesthesia pro program or something like that but i'm not i can't be too sure but you definitely do not automatically get into a program to become a specialist soon after you're done with internship you will have to apply so as a medical officer you can work in a particular department that you're interested in say surgery or ops and gynae or pediatrics and then you can apply to university anywhere in the world where you can now study to be a specialist or a consultant in the namibia south africa system if you are in a specializing program you're called a registrar and i think it's the same in the uk but if you're based in the united states of america you're then called a resident education is so expensive but it's definitely worth it because nobody wants to be a regular doctor like no one wants to be a chronic medical officer at all so if you have ambition definitely you're going to have to study our people or our doctors usually go specialize in south africa so if you're born before 1990 which was before namibia was independent before march 21st of march 1990 actually <laughs> then you can go to south africa and specialize as a south african citizen because we were once a colony of south africa and then the south african government will pay you while you're working there and um, you can obviously just get a permanent post and work there as a doctor that is if you're born before 1990 but if you're born after that you definitely have to get your own funding and if you go um and the government the namibian government is paying for you you will have to come back and work for twice the amount of years that you went to study so say for instance i went to study for four years in south africa and the government the namibian government was paying for me i will then have to come back to namibia after i am done and work for a state hospital or work for the government for eight years so you're contractually obliged to do that 
or otherwise you can decide not to work for the government but you will have to pay back the money that they spent on you while you're in south africa because you needed like some means of living and then you can go private and make more money like that so it just it, on, it honestly just depends so you've done your four years in south africa or wherever it is that you went to study i'm just referring to south africa a lot because that's where most of our doctors go and the education there is very very good so say you're done with your um specializing program you now have to come back to namibia in our hospital settings our head of departments the people that are in charge are usually the consultants or the specialists so they are basically the overseers of the ward they see patients and they sort of make decisions give their opinions they're the ones that are doing the major procedures basically this is like next level next level academicness so um as a consultant you have your medical officers working under you and you also have your interns working under you patient is admitted by an intern seen by a medical officer and then the very next day or unless it's urgent is seen by the consultant so as a consultant you can either work say in state or you can just open up your own practice in private and you can make lots of money you can make money 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 but obviously like it took so long for you to get to that spot. As interns, we're really trying to get the level of becoming a consultant because, I mean, we don't get into medicine for the money, but it really helps. After a long day at work, you can book yourself in a spa and you can drive a G-Wagon and live your best life. It really, really helps. And obviously you want to get to a level of academicness. Yes, is that a word? You also want to get to a level academically where you know you know most of the things that are happening or you have an idea and you can make decisions on very important things so basically as a consultant you have options galore you can do so many things you can either stay in a state hospital and run a department or run a ward for however many years you still get paid really well or you can go into private practice and then you can open up your own practice and make money off of that or you can apply to university and I'm not really sure how you get published to become a professor, but I'm sure there are requirements and you can do that as a, an academic route that you can also take. So this gives you an option. Being a consultant basically just gives you an option for you to work anywhere in the world. It gives you like all the options that you can think of. And that is what we are all trying to do. We are trying to get to that level of being a consultant. And it takes many years. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes money. Education is so expensive. It is very, very expensive. That's basically the entire hierarchy of medicine, at least in my setting. You have a medical student, student intern, medical intern, medical officer, then a consultant, and then a prof maybe but like we don't have one in our hospital do we i'm not sure <laughs> i'm always asking you guys on my socials what you'd like to see on my youtube channel and i really make an effort to make sure that i post those little things that you guys ask me to do so if there's anything else you'd like to see on my channel please let me know also let me know how many years do you guys have to study in order to get a, a really good post or qualification in whatever field of work that you are doing and i will see you guys in my next video mm -hmm.